We frequently receive questions on different HC topics, so we decide to answer those questions and share with you. If you have any interesting questions that you want to be answered, so please write them on the comment part and we will consider them in our next videos. So let's see what's our next question. How to proceed to risk assessment after defining the hazards? Risk assessment uh, is a systematic approach, involves identifying, analyzing and uh, controlling hazards and risks, uh, of course. It's basically uh, involved identifying, uh, defining in the work activities, uh, so what is the work activity and then defining uh, hazards involved in that work activity and uh, also the who might be uh, harmed as a result of uh, this uh, uh, activity, the hazard, for example, if something happens and what may happen, for example, how they will be harmed. So, I guess you are doing some activity on the, on the so for example, welding. So what is the hazard? For example, hazard is, is our sparks, for example. Uh, the flying sparks is uh, the hot surface, uh, maybe the hazard. So who might be harmed is the welder, is the welder who's doing the weld or anybody around uh, working there. there. And what may happen, uh, they probably get the hand burn or skin uh, burn or uh, the particles may get into their eyes. So uh, what happens? So for example, how may they get hurt? Then of course uh, we do uh, initial uh, risk assessment, uh, we do uh, evaluation of the risk. So what we do is we, there are uh, the matrices, different matrices, so most famous matrix is, is a 5 to 5 matrix. For example, uh, it's, uh, we measure the likelihood from 1 to 5 and we also measure the, the, the severity from 1 to 5. So the way it works is, uh, because we said we multiple likelihood to severity, then it gives us a risk level. Yeah, that was the, our uh, calculation. Like the level of the likelihood and multiply, multiply by uh, the level of the severity, uh, we have the risk level. Then from 1 to 5 we evaluate what's the likelihood of these uh, flying particles to get into their eye. For example, if the, the likelihood is, uh, if the welder is not wearing the face mask or uh, the, there's a too much uh, dust environment or the particles, the, the metal has been uh, cleaned, is very rusty or for example, is not very clean, then there are potential that there will be more flying uh, particles uh, the, as, as a result of welding operation or cutting operation. So uh, the likelihood is get bigger. So you put two or three or four or five, uh, defining the likelihood of this uh, uh, problem. Then uh, you get the severity. What will happen? Uh, it will get to the eyes, so it may damage the eyes, it may, uh, the person may be hospitalized for example or what would be the severity so if it's maybe two three four um, in this case i would say it's maybe three uh, with flying particle and then uh, three to three uh, so your risk level is is nine three multiplied by three and uh, your risk level is nine the next thing is you see uh, you start measuring what is the uh, what you see you have in place already to control these problems control the welding, uh, for example, um, a broad example as welding and just carry on on welding. Uh, what, what, is the, what is the process of controlling this uh, risk? Uh, what do you have existing measures, for example? Mm, you have, for example, uh, equipment is in good order uh, or you have the area barricaded so no other people uh, come into there or you have provided people with personal protective equipment and etc. After having the existing control measures then you actually do another uh, measurement to see what is the risk level and what is your protection, how much it does help. Then you put additional measures. After additional measures, for example, you can provide a toolbox talk, you can provide a training or you can restrict the area, for example, or if the there are any other actions you can put in place to reduce the risk uh, or the likelihood or the severity then uh, you, you put them in process. Then what happens uh, you measure that risk again and, and at second stage. Then after the measurement you see that after putting some more control measures in place you reduce the risk level to the acceptable level. There is n you will never get the, uh, this zero level. You will never get has uh, completely hazardous environment because as we said there are hazards everywhere and the risks are potential risk everywhere. So what we will get is, what we will try always, we get, we'll try to get the reduce uh, to the minimum. 
minimum acceptable level. We call it a uh, LARP, as low as reasonably practicable. So the risk level is that uh, low that will not hurt someone or will, uh, will is, is under control, for example. So with all this control, then we carry out, uh, we carry out our activities and we carry out what we are, uh, what we are doing. We hear very often about the steps of risk assessment. What are they? It really starts uh, identifying hazards um, and assess the risk. Uh, it's a famous five steps of risk assessment. Identify hazards, assess the risk, then uh, control the risk and r record your findings because without fi rec recording your uh, risk assessment, uh, so the risk assessment is no meaning at all because if you get together uh, with the workers or with the, the team of people and do the risk assessment, if you don't record it, uh, so there is no, there are no basics, so there is, is no reference uh, to what's happened. So if you come back tomorrow, so what we did yesterday, nobody knows about it. So uh, recording is always uh, is always important because recording gives you uh, uh, the chance to review it the next day, to re review it on the next activity, to see what you have done, what controls you have taken in place, or even if something goes wrong or some accidents happen. So you come back and review your risk assessment. So what we made a mistake, so what we didn't cover in the risk assessment, why this happened. So that's why uh, these five elements are really important. This is defining the hazards, con uh, assessing the risk, controlling the risk, recording the risk assessment and reviewing the risk assessment. What's the role here of control of the risk assessment? The hierarchy of control is actually uh, the, the, the step, step by step uh, control measures uh, to, con uh, to take the uh, control of hazards uh, to actually to protect people. So the hazards, the control starts there with the eliminating the hazards from the source. So if you can eliminate the hazard from the source, that's, uh, that's a good thing. You know, if you can't eliminate the hazard from the source, then the next step is you have to substitute with more or less hazardous uh, activity or with more or less hazardous substance, for example, so to protect the people. The third is, is getting uh, stop the contact, like engineering controls, for example. So say you're uh, in the paint shop, for example, uh, painting uh, using chemical paints and uh, to stop person uh, using the painting, get in touch, uh, into contact with the paint or paint environment. So you can put engineering, engineering control, so you can get the robotic systems uh, in place. So what happens, the robots uh, uh, applies the painting or you control them from barriers. Uh, from the window, uh, from the control room that uh, the, the paint application happens. So that puts a con uh, distance between the, the, the human and actual, actual hazard. So there, there could be many ways of um, uh, control measures, like so, uh, grinder discs protection or uh, machine guarding. So they are the, the samples for the protection. Then uh, you have safe system of work, uh, you, you provide the trainings, you provide toolbox talks, you have procedures in place, you have you implement systems, so all this uh, stuff there uh, really uh, they are actually at the, at the fourth stage. Then of course you have uh, uh, personal protective equipment which is the last resort uh, of defense, uh, so it's not first one, sometimes unfortunately uh, people use it as a, as a first and last one and they only they think that wearing PPE would protect them from everything but uh, is, that's not the case at all. Uh, it's a last resort, it's, uh, if you can't eliminate you can substitute, you can protect or you can put safe system in place uh, if, uh, and you have to provide the PPE. And some systems there are six elements in the hierarchy uh, which is the discipline. They put, uh, there is a, another control system uh, famous is called Eric PD, and the last uh, item, last uh, defense, uh, they put uh, discipline. As per the Eric PD cycle uh, uh, hierarchy, uh, you have to have uh, get discipline in place in the workplace, so people follow these rules and actually they take care of uh, the control measures and they, they, they protect each other, they protect uh, uh, people from. Uh, from being hurt for, by hazards. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you know what question comes next? Subscribe to our channel to find out the next question with us.